So welcome back to ETCS Bytes Back, and we're going to have a look at another mode called Passive Shunt. And the reason I want to talk about this is because it's come up in my work and we've been struggling to understand it. So what I'm going to talk about is what I interpret the specifications to mean, but it may not be totally correct and different implementations could be different. So if you think I've got it wrong, please do add to the comments how you think it should work. So what's passive shunt for? Well, shunting activities can be very varied. Sometimes they can be undertaken using a movement authority, but quite often they do require the use of shunt because we need to move backwards or propel wagons. And during those activities, the driver may need to move between cabs, both in the same locomotive or in different locomotives. And passive shunt is around what happens when the driver moves from one cab to another, previously having been in shunt. And the whole concept is to save time. So if a driver leaves one cab to go to and do some shunting from the other cab, but then is coming back to the first cab and wants to continue in SH shunt, then the PS can be an option. So what does the subset 26 chapter 4 tell us about it? Well, it tells us that it's defined to manage an onboard equipment of a slave engine. So this implies to me that we are talking about two locomotives. They are coupled together mechanically with a brake pipe, etc. But there's no electrical coupling between them, so the front engine can't control the slave and vice versa. And these are part of a shunting consist. And it could be a locomotive, some wagons and locomotive, or it could just be two locomotives coupled together. However, it then goes on to be a little bit more confusing because it does say that the mode can be used to carry out shunting movements with a single engine. And for a single engine, it's only going to have one set of onboard equipment, but it could have two cabs and the driver can change between them. So in the first one, we are moving between two different uh, locomotives with independent onboards with no knowledge of each other. And in the other case, we move between the cabs controlled by the single onboard. So let's have a think about how this will all work. So let's start with two locomotives. So I've got two locomotives coupled either end of some wagons. My driver arrives in the cab on the right hand side, ready to do some shunting. And he will undertake start of mission. And during the start of mission process, selects that they want to do shunting. So the mode of the leading locomotive with the driver in it is now SH and the driver can move the train forwards or backwards, whichever he likes. Now, having undertaken this movement, the driver now wants to move the train back onto a different track and would prefer to be at the leading end of the train. So prior to leaving the leading cab, the driver operates the maintain shunting function. This is a DMI function which enables the onboard to be instructed to remain in passive shunt and then return to shunting later on. So having operated the maintain shunting, the driver now closes the desk and it will then put the leading locomotive or the locomotive they're in into passive shunt, PS. Our driver can now move to the other cab, walking along the track or whatever, and once they enter the other track, they will open the cab and start the start emission process. Because the two onboards are not connected, the start emission process will only affect the train, the locomotive that the driver is in. And in this case, the driver again selects shunting and they can then undertake a movement to wherever they need to go in the journey. Having completed this movement, the driver now closes the cab and closing the desk causes the locomotive the driver is in to go into standby. Once again, our driver can move to the other end of the train and this time when they open the desk, the onboard automatically goes straight to shunt. They don't have to go through the start of mission process. 
and the driver can now drive the train off to the right or left, whichever way they wish to go. So passive shunt is a way of allowing one of the locomotives to be moved without it applying the brakes, which is what would happen if it was in standby, um, and allowing you to return to shunt immediately that you re-enter the locomotive. So ETCS can also be fitted on locomotives and short units where there is only one European Vital Computer, or EVC. And that will be associated with the data radiodometry and the Belize reader. And both the cabs are connected on a typical locomotive to the one EVC. And the rules within the subsets are that only one of the cabs can be active at a time, which makes a lot of sense. So let's look at our locomotive. It has one common EVC and it has two desks, one in each of the cabs. And if we turn to subset 34, we find some more information to help us understand how this may work. Each cab has got a two state input, cab active and cab not active. And that's the equivalent of desk open and desk closed, as it explains in the note. And it does say then at the last of the clauses on this slide, if there's more one than one cab connected, each cab will have its own individual input. And if we move on in the, in the text, we find there are some other requirements. And one of the requirements is that the cab status input has the value cab active if the cab connected is active. And that's the one from which the traction is going to be controlled. It also tells us that if we have a single cab loco, but with two desks, then that has its own special arrangement in order to establish which of the desks is active. But the key thing in the last clause is that regardless of how the rolling stock is arranged, only one cab or virtual cab or desk is can be reported active at any time to the ETCS on board. So let's imagine that the one of the desks here is open, the driver is there, the a desk on the left, and they go through the start emission process and they select shunting again. Now the mode of the EVC has changed from standby which represents the whole state of the locomotive to shunt, again representing the whole state of the locomotive. And the active desk is the one from which the driver can control the train. If at the end of the shunting activity, the driver intends to move to the other end, they will operate the maintain shunting, which is just an intermittent in input from the DMI, but that is then remembered in the EVC. So that when they close the desk, the EVC will transition from shunt to passive shunt. And so now the whole of the locomotive is in passive shunt. So what now happens if one of the desks is opened? Well, if the driver returns to the same desk and opens it, then that becomes the active desk and immediately the EVC will change to shunt controlled from desk A, the open desk. Similarly, if we'd open desk B and the driver has uh, activated that one, then the EVC will also change to shunting again, but this time desk B will be the controlling desk. So if we have more than one EVC in the formation, the passive shunting applies to the EVC and to the cabs connected to it. And when you change from one locomotive to another locomotive, then the passive shunting is remain remembered on the first locomotive. However, if you move between the cabs of one locomotive, then the whole locomotive's mode goes passive shunt and opening either of the desks will cause it to go to shunt immediately. Well, I think that's what happens. There are a few things I'm not quite sure about. I'm not quite sure about how if you have two locomotives in the formation and one is 
you put one into passive shunt in order to move it. How do you release the brakes from the other one? Because the other locomotive will be trying to apply the brakes whilst it is in standby. Perhaps you need to isolate the brakes or perhaps both locomotives need to be in passive shunt. Anyway, over to you now. Do you think I've got the explanation of passive shunt right for both two locomotives and for a single locomotive? Have I misinterpreted something in the subsets? Have you read something that I've missed? I'm looking forward to hearing from you.